Hi guys, this is just a quick video to support our ultimate guide to balancing article over on heatgeek.com. Essentially what we're saying in this part of the article is that you need to find a lock shield valve that has a really good control over the flow to save you time in balancing. And this is just a little explainer about that. As many of you are aware, it's normally just the last half a turn before closing that actually does anything when balancing with lock shield. You can normally tell this by listening carefully when you nip up the valve. This is to do with two things, valve authority and the opening characteristic of the valve. If you want specific details on those two things, head over to our balancing article on heatgeek.com. I'll put a link in the description below. If you've got a particularly big or difficult system to balance, here's a simple way of checking or looking for valves that will help save you a ton of time. What you need to check for is how much travel the gland has or plug before leaving the valve seating. So take this cheap valve for example. Quite a popular solution, lots of people use it. Now if we wind this right down, so the plug or gland, we'll call it plug for the sake of this video, reaches just the top of the seat and the seat is what it sits inside, you'll see that it's only got one, a, almost a full turn before it shuts. So it doesn't protrude into the seating much before it shuts off. That gives it a quick opening characteristic, meaning the minute it's open, it's open. At low flow rates, and particularly with gas central heating or modern gas central heating, it doesn't interrupt the flow path enough to give a good enough control of the flow. Also note this valve has quite a wide aperture on the inlet and a very large aperture on the outlet. Now take this Danfoss lock shield for example. This is the lock shield that comes with the RAS C2 TRV. This valve, again, has a very small travel. See, there's the end of the seating. It's only got one, not even one and a half turns and it's already reached the end of the seat. So it doesn't again interrupt the flow too much. However, this does have a smaller inlet and a smaller outlet. This increases the resistance to flow, which increases the valve's authority. And that essentially means that it has more control of the flow. At the complete other end of the spectrum, we have the IMI Regutech lock shield. Now, if you have a look here, if I bring this to nearly closed, it's nearly closed, it's still turning, still turning, still traveling within that seat, and now it's stopped. That had one, two, three, like three turns or so before it finally left the seating. And even after it does leave the seating, if you have a look inside the outlet again, the flow path is still interrupted. If I keep on lifting this up to all the way to maximum, that's all the way at maximum now. It still has to get around that plug before it gets out of the valve. So that interrupts the flow path a lot more, therefore has a lot more control of the flow. Now while ordering these valves, we also came across this cheap solution. This is an old fashioned union connection. Now this valve has a small inlet and small in outlet. If I compare with the 15 mil version, you've got that and you've got that. So this valve already has increased authority. I think this might have even been the cheapest valve that we found. Also, if I close the valve all the way, it's already closed, look how much further it travels. So that there, it's open there. So you've got one, one and a half, two, you've probably got about two, two, two and a half turns there before it opens. That's much better. However, I'll open it all the way and you can see, uh, you can see it doesn't interrupt the flow path all the way. However, it is kind of dangling in the way, interrupting the flow a little bit there. So that was a nice surprise to see. Now this will improve the valve curve characteristic we talk about in the article. I don't think this will quite match the IMI, but for value for money, have you, have you got an outside tap here? Okay, a bit of a crude experiment here. We've got a pressure reducing valve uh, feeding a lock shield. And this pressure reducing valve we've set to give about 16 litres a minute through this lock shield valve at full opening, which is a little bit of an overflow really. You're never gonna see those flow rates of a radio. So the radio would have to be about 20 kilowatts large, but we're a bit restricted by the accuracy of this flow cup. So this is just to give an example of how much control this valve has over flow or valve authority. First valve we're testing is the cheap compression valve. 
So half turn. Half a turn, that's about two and a half litres a minute, which is above most radiators already. But I've moved it to one full turn and it's already at 11 litres a minute. Oh. oh. Uh, do you open it some more? Or? Well, this is one and a half turns and now it's at 20 litres a minute. When we set the flow rate, hold on. When we set the pressure reducing valve up, we actually set it up with um, is it the Danfoss that the, a oh, different right. valve. Yeah. We actually set it up with a valve with more restrictions in it and more authority. So when we adjusted it, uh, it settled at 16 litres a minute. This is just allowing so much flow through that it's just gone off the chart. We're at 22 litres a minute and we're only at a turn and a half. So this is already fully open with no restriction and we're only a turn and a half open with extra high flow rate. It's basically just an isolation valve. It's an on-off valve. Yes, yes, it's basically an isolation valve, exactly. We're going to write down all these measurements and I'll put them at the end of the video and in the article. Okay, this next one's the Danfoss valve. Better. Just about two, four, five, about six. Should be going up quite nicely. Nine, ten, thirteen. But right, we're all the way open and it's not moving anywhere now. So it's got max, max for about thirteen, fourteen. Not, I'm pretty impressed with that, to be fair. Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice sort of That's gradient, nice. isn't it? Yeah, it's even. Right, I my valve. I my Regulux. Uh, I my Regulux slash Regutech. Slash Regutech, yes. Um, half turn. I'd say that's one. One and a half. Two, four, seven, eight point five, ten, eleven, eleven still. Okay, last valve. This is the Screwfix GP1. Screwfix GP. Also for sale oh, at Tool no. Station. Yeah, also available from other places. It's the general DIY GP. But right. it's the three quarter union one rather than the three 15. Quarter, it's a three quarts union. Let's start. Ugh. Right. Two. Or no, less than. I'd say one actually. Same as the I know. Two there. Five and a half, I would say. Six and a half. Nine. Ten. Twelve. Fifteen. That's pretty open. Slightly interesting results. May as well go through them here. We've got the 15 mil compression valve. Did absolutely sod all once it was past uh, one turn. After one turn, it just it, it just went off the scale to 22 litres a minute. These valves, even fully open, weren't even near 22 litres a minute. Max flow from the IMI valve was 11.5, which shows good authority. Max flow from the three quarter was 15. Max flow from the Danfoss, 14 litres a minute. But you'll see here, the Danfoss didn't have as much control lower down. The three quarter valve, cheapo, and the IMI had the best control lower down. IMI obviously having the best. Um, and the more evenly spaced these numbers, the better the control throughout the valve. You're never really going to be operating in here anyway, to be quite honest, but uh, it still goes to show that curve that we're just discussing in the uh, article. Um, uh, you've got nice evenly spaced numbers. Actually, I'm pretty impressed with the Danfoss as well, but these it's between one to sort of four that are the important numbers, and there's not much... Uh, there's not much control over that first half a turn, which is quite important when it comes to balancing, whereas there does seem to be by far the best on the IMI. This is still very impressive for the money, but that, if you bought those, you're going to be there all day balancing if you've got a half decent sized system. Let's go back inside. So there we have it. If you know what to look for when picking a lock shield valve, it could save you a ton of time than going round valve to valve to valve when balancing on a larger system. So if you have a look at the table, the Regulux clearly has the best valve authority or the best control overflow, especially at the lower end or the last few turns. And that's where really all the balancing happens over that last little bit that it closes. If you don't have any control, like in the first valve that we tested, this is just good for turning on and off the radiator, not good for balancing. The minute it's open, it's fully open and it allows a load of flow. I should say the larger the system, the more this is gonna help. Small systems really don't really need balancing much, if ever. And that makes sense. These IMI valves, which have come out top of the pack, are much better than the rest, but they're clearly more made for commercial. Got half inch inlets. Um, they do do press versions of these. However, they're Viega press. Um, I'm not sure if they do compression or not. 
What's more is this Regutech valve is taken to another level with the Regulux valve, which is actually what this is. Regulux has two additional features. Feature number one is it incorporates inside here, you have a small pin in there where you can put a flathead screwdriver and you can adjust the maximum opening of this valve. So if you've spent a long time balancing, a decorator comes along, turns off the valves, takes off the radiator, paints behind the radiator, puts it back. When he opens it back up, all your presets are in place. It kind of gives an adjustable KV value, which is handy if you read the article. The other thing is, you can get an adapter for this. Looks like this. Uh, this screws on the top, and you can drain down from here. So this is, isn't just a lock shield, it's also a drain down point. This little baby was a nice surprise though. This is cheap and has far better control than the Danfoss and certainly this piece of junk. If you'd like to see the different valve characteristics, we'll plot this on the graph and put it on the article. That's it for this one, nice quick one, and I'll see you soon. So there we have it, we're on the last page. Right, some lock shields, put them on the stove, cook them for about a half hour. While ordering these valves, we just come across a cheap lock shield. Hi right, guys, this is a quick video, can I shock you to support the ultimate guide to balancing article? over on heatgeek.com <laughs> and essentially what we're saying here are you recording this yeah 